So I've done a bit of research into you guys and there are links I've seen to free masonry. These are stories in a book that so somebody has written. The stories in a book, they're based on a white Jesus and a black Jesus. In and when I'm one. gonna clear it all up for you, right? Okay. Each time he, he reincarnates. Yeah. Are you saying that he comes in as a baby, like a normal birth, a normal child, and then he grows up? Does he know he who he is as a child or if God is supposed to be more powerful than the devil, how can the devil get away with doing the things that the devil does? if God can get rid of the devil. I've heard you guys say to stop eating meat. Is that based on how, the, how they're preparing the meat or is it literally just not good? It's like if you said Jesus is here today, I've arrived, yeah? You get people who go, nah, you ain't Jesus. Ah, you're a fool. I'm gonna find listen out, to you. Go find out. <laughs> go and find out. But most people won't even know because they don't even know what he looks like. They don't know where he's gonna come, how he's gonna come. Sorry, man, I have to. Look at this, this has never happened. My name's Sheldon, growing up as a Christian, Christian family, Christian background. Um, so this direction, mm. for me, it's a lot because it affects more or less everyone around me, my friends, my mm. family. Um, some might not like this journey in the beginning, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But if they was to do the research, I'm sure they will lead themselves to the same conclusion, same place. Mm -hmm. um, but talking to friends, one of the, 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 the biggest obstacle I've seen with friends is where this information is coming from. They, they, are, they seem afraid, basically. Mm. Um, so I've done a bit of research into you guys and there are links I've seen to free masonry. Mm. Would you be able to talk more on that? So first of all, Sheldon, welcome. Nice Hello. to meet you. Um, I'm Saken. Um, I'm a student teacher of the master teacher, partner Bab Yanun, and he teaches us our culture and okay. way of life known as Wu Sabat. Wu Sabat covers everything within a person's culture. So that's all our records, our information, our scriptures, our deities, our own language, our own foods, our own dance, our own dress, mm. you know, so it's basically everything. Um, sorry, um, King, yeah. this thing's making my, um, the, the, <laughs> Dry. the thing, um, yeah, yeah, it's I've making walked, my eyes water. I've warmed up quite yeah. a right, actually. When sorry. It's nice. Yeah, it started to give me, I was just, my eyes just watering as I'm talking. That's all that nice though. Yeah, sorry about that, so. Yeah, so um, it's a pleasure to meet and speak to people. And when, when you were saying people are afraid and all of that about Wu Sabat, yes, it's because many people may not be familiar with it mm. in, in the way that it's been presented. However, they are familiar with our teacher, Dr. Malachi Ziyo, in many ways because um, people in, in Christianity, in religion, mm or as um, black people, sorry man, I have to, look at this, this has never happened to me, my eyes are just watering, <laughs> like, gosh, hold on, let me just, uh... yeah, because when you did your introduction, you kind of went on into the questions, you have to kind of remind me of the, the questions again. Um, so, my friends, and yeah, that's that, it, that's what I was yeah. saying, so let me carry on from there, so, so it's not really about your friends and your family and even society, mm. because the, the path of truth, um, like I was saying, in every religion, in every um, kind of like religious teachings, they do tell you about you should accept the truth. And they say when the truth comes, the false things will perish. Mm. So in order for you to establish who's telling you the truth of not or not, you have to question them. You have to do your research. Yeah. You have to come to your own conclusion. So even biblically, biblically mm. from the book, everyone, everyone is, is looking at this whole scenario that we're all in as it's the coming to the end anyway. Mm. So there was always going to be massive change. And there is massive change right in front of everyone. But everyone's just like, no, but this book, but the book is not relaying really the things that we are seeing. Exactly. So it's, that's another thing that really made me stop mm. that direction. Yeah. Because that direction is not true to the book. Mm. 
And I was like, so if this is not true, and I've seen that a lot of people in the world are... Sorry, when you say the book, you know, the, we've also about, we have to be clear. Okay, like, the Bible. What, 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 yeah, right. So okay. the Bible, right. um, who's talking about it? Who's holding the book Yeah. on TV? Where did it start? Where did it come from? Yeah. What language is it in? There we go. Right, so this is where, where you start, because without the book, would they still be live on earth? Because the book has a birth date. Mm. And the book has many versions, and it's like many before, misinterpretations. Yeah. Mm. And so when we say the book, it sounds like one book, but there are many, many versions of that, the book, the, the Bible. Book. So this is where you get confused because you have to then say, okay, let's go to the origins of the book. Mm. Where did it first come from and where did it start? And all of the monotheistic religions will agree that those books come from Abraham. Yeah, then right, you have yeah. to say... Who is Abraham? Mm. They say he's the father of all nations, right? And Abraham was a Chaldean from Ur of Chaldea. Mm. And he, that's the area of Mesopotamia, right? Okay. And he was influenced by his father. And his father's name is Terah. And that person, he was a Zoroastrian. He, he basically, his religion was Zoroastrianism, which is what Abraham followed. This is why... Later on, when people are talking about the Bible being in Hebrew, it's because they, they don't realise that Hebrew is not a language, but a description of an action when Abraham was crossing the Tigris-Euphrates River and he was called a Hebrew or a Hebrew, meaning one who crosses over. Mm -hmm. So until that point, he didn't follow the Bible. He was following his father's religion, you see, and those... Um, those writings go back to the Anunnaki stories from, okay, from yeah. ancient Sumer, which is the Sumerians. Enuma Elish, the Gilgamesh epics, mm. the basically Atrahasis, um, the Akkadian tablets. This is where the Bible was grafted from. And this is where, by the time it gets to English, there are many, many, many translations and many, many um, mistranslations. Different images as well. Exactly. So in terms of that, so... There are two images that we know of. When you speak to some people, they say Jesus is black. Mm -hmm. Some say Jesus is white. But you've spoken about two different images, two, not two people, but there's a white Jesus and there's a black. Mm -hmm. So how does that get mixed up? Or why is the, there's the black Jesus not, mm. not seen? Not, well, I know why yeah. it's not seen, but... Mm. Um, when, when we talk, that's what I'm saying, even that term, Jesus never existed during the person's time that they're calling Jesus. So their name wasn't Jesus back then? No, that's what I'm saying. We're bar that, Jesus then, there's a bar Jesus. That's one of the, there's three Jesus stories in the Bible. Yeah? Yeah. The, the first one who, they, remember this is, these are stories in a book that so somebody has written. The stories in a book, they're based on a white Jesus and a black Jesus. In I'm going to clear it all up for you, right? Okay. So based on the Bible stories, the characters in the Bible that, they make up into one character is well, who they call Yeshua, right? Who will be the first Jesus, the son of Mary. And when you ask people who is his father, they say he, he had an immac immaculate conception, mm. which means that no man mm. was involved. Like, but when you read the actual Bible, it tells you um, 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 Gabriel appeared to her and took on the form of a man. And the thing is that when you read the Bible, you also have to read the Quran and you have to read that which came before. So all of their monotheistic religion, whether it's Islam, Christianity or Judaism, mm. they're really from Abraham. So all, you have to read all of them together. To but what sense. happens to make sense of everything? So there may be parts that are in the Quran that are not in the Bible and parts that are not mm. in the Bible are in the Quran. It's a mad because puzzle. books were taken out mm. of each of the books. So what I'm basically saying is that when Gabriel appeared to Mary, they tell you in the book that he took a form of a man and then he went in onto her. Mm. And if you read anywhere in the scriptures, right from Genesis all the way, wherever it says somebody's gone in onto a woman, it's talking about having sex with mm. them. So this is why we ask the Christians, in order to produce a male child, Mary would have had to get a Y chromosome from yeah, somewhere, yeah, yeah. right? So this is why we're saying that came from a man. Yeah. And that man in the Bible was Gabriel, if you go back and read the story. So, so there's that, that Jesus called Yeshua, right, which is misinterpreted uh, because there's no J's or V's in the Hebrew language. 
so they couldn't make up a word like Jesus. And when you read the scripture in the book of Acts, it says we have found a Messiah who has been interpreted the Christ. You see, so that's where that first came about. Mm. So he, he didn't know that name. So if he was walking down the road today and you were going, Jesus, Jesus, he would just keep walking. Mm. Just like if your name is Michael and, or Sheldon and you're walking down the road, and I'm going, Michael, Michael, you're just going to ignore me because that's not your name. name yeah. Right, so now the, the son, the second Jesus is um, that Jesus' son who had a child with Mary of Magdalene because he was also married. He had a wife. Mm. In fact, again, you will know that because in Jewish traditions and Jewish law, only somebody you're married to can touch your feet, cream your feet and do those things that Mary Magdalene was doing. Okay. His wedding was the wedding in Canaan. When you go back and read that wedding story... He was story, Jewish? Well, that's what they, they interpret, it, interpret it as later okay. on. But remember, he studied in Egypt, according to the story, because yeah. there True. were many missing years. When he was a child... And Herod was killing all the boy sons that were being mm. born because there was talk of this new king that's coming to take over. He was afraid and he was like, kill every boy child. Mm. So Mary, God told Mary and Jesus, told Jesus to take Mary and go and hide in Egypt. Yeah. So you have a point where he's born, then he's taken to Egypt where he hides and no one hears about him for many years. Then he comes back at around age 12 then takes his bat mitzvah at age mm. 13, because according to Jewish traditions, and then he's now fighting against the, the Judaic laws with the Pharisees and the Sanhedrins in the temples, turning over tables and all that. Mm. Then the next, then there's a big gap again. The next time you hear about him is when he's running from being um, chased to be, to be crucified. And he goes into the garden and then he hides and he prays and says, mm. if it be possible, let this cut pass from me. So he didn't want to die, which is kind of strange because he the whole they say the whole reason he came here was to die for your sins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now he's time to die. He's mm. scared to die. Anyway, so as the story goes, at 33 years old, he gets crucified on the cross. And when he's on the cross, what does he say? Eli, Eli, the Max of Ethany, which means my God, my yeah. God, so why has thou deity to forsaken me? Deity, yeah. Right, so... There's a lot of missing information. Mm. So the second Jesus is his son with Mary Magdalene. That's who you were saying when you said Bar Jesus. Because the word Bar is left untranslated in the Bible. So Bar means son in Hebrew. So is that, is that, is that, is that a white person or a black person? Right. This is, this is according to their records, right? I'm going to come back and tie it to the, yeah. to the, the other part. I'm just trying to establish the three the, Jesuses the, first. Yeah, yeah. And the last one is... Um, Mark Antony and Cleopatra had a, mm, yeah. a son and he, his name was Jesus. That's the third Jesus. Yeah, that, he's known as Cleophas in the Bible. So now the three different people have accounts where they did different things. So the son of Jesus, Bar Jesus, he traveled around. He went to like, um, he went to India. Yeah, mm. And in India, when he was traveling around, he was studying and learning things. Incarnation and all that. Right. They called him um, um, Saint Isa, right? So then he came back and when he was doing that, trying to heal people, because he, he learned um, he learned the Kabbalah. He was studying the Kabbalah and all of that, okay. right? So he was referred to as a sorcerer and then he got killed, right? And then the other one, which is the you know son of um, Cleopatra and Mark Antony, Again, he was doing the same thing. So there's a lot of confusion with these three people, but they've mm. wrapped their story into they're one. Not, they're not even linked. They're not, they're not the same person. They're three not the different same people. person, but are they linked in terms of family lineage or anything? Oh, like only that? the first two, because the first the one had son. a son with Mary okay. and Magdalene. The last one, not. The last one is Cleopatra and Mark Antony's mm. son. But to go back to the point of the Christ thing now, each culture and each race are expecting a Christ which mm. really means an anointed one or from the word Christos, right? Mm. Which means to wipe clean, to anoint. And so each race is expecting their Christ. Our Christ, where they got the original story from, is from ancient Egypt. This yeah. is why I'm saying to you that all the religious characters um, in the monotheistic religions, they all tie back to Egypt. They're all coming from Egypt. And that Christ is known as Tut Ank Amun. Yeah. And really the word Amun, because that's the Christ that is our Christ, yeah, if mm. you want to use that term, our anointed. And um, 
because when you listen to the religious prayers in the monotheistic religion, they all end their prayers with saying what? In Christianity, they say, Amen. 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 In Ra. Arabic or in Islam, they say, Amen. Mm. And in Hebrew or Judaism, they say, Amen. When you look at the phonetics of where that word comes from, it's Amun. From Egypt. See? Egypt from yeah. Egypt. Yeah. So this is what they're saying. Like When you say um, Tut Ankh Amun, you're really because he was referred to as the golden child, right? And he is that Christ where he keeps coming back over and over and over and over again, yeah. Because throughout the different cultures, he is he's an incarnated being that keeps coming over and coming back. So when you say he comes back, that's let me come, just finish this last sorry, point because yeah, it ties in. Yeah. So now the day and time we're living in now, that incarnation is here, and you know that because the last book of the um, of the Bible is the book of Revelation. And it tells you in the first Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, yeah, it tells you that this is the book of Christ, yeah, but he's going to send it and signify it by his angel. And that angel is known as Malachi, because when you say my mm -hmm. angel, that's what the word translates like, my angel Malachi, right? And so this Malachi will be the one coming at the end, what people call the end of the world, mm. and he will be the one to give you all the information and bring about this new time that we're in. And so when obviously Dr. Malachi Z came on the scene, that's what he started to do, to clear up all the, the confusion, knowledge. all the lies and then give out the correct information and knowledge. And now it's really about people recognizing who that being is. And in ancient, um, whatever culture you go to, they will talk about this time period that's gonna come. Sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, when you say that um, each, each time he, he reincarnates, yeah. do you, are you saying that he comes in as a baby, like a normal birth, a normal child, and then he grows up? Does he know he, who he is as a child or he, something happens to him as he grows up and then he comes into right. who he, he does, is? He doesn't know initially as a child, oh, okay. but, but when he's growing up, he mm. starts to do... The miraculous same. things, yeah, yeah, okay, and like you know, speak early. He can do things and um, just like just things that people are like, that's mm. a bit strange. But as he grows up, remember the elders who seed him into like someone. This is where the whole concept of they know exactly where he is. Mary and mm. Jesus. Like if you look at Doctor Malachi Z York's story, his mother was called Mary, as well, mm. right, and he was named. Because he's got his father's side lineage and he's got his mother's side. And in Arabic, he was named Isa, which they translate as Jesus. Mm. So people that were putting the pieces together was like, okay, so he's Jesus. But he says, I am not Jesus, right? He's never claimed to be Jesus. But the name Isa, because he was known as Isa al Hadi al Mahdi, you okay. see? And so his mother's name Mary. So people are like, oh, Jesus. His mother's Mary. And so, but it's really, um, if, if you could call it a coincidence. But as he was growing and up. His mother's name. Yeah. Malika Z. York's mother's name is Mary. Yeah, Mary Okran. And every time he comes back, his mother's name is Mary. No, not every time. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. The stories in the Bible okay, yeah, of yeah. Jesus, his okay. name, his mother's name is Mary because they yeah, said yeah. the Virgin Mary. Yeah, of course, yeah. And and obviously the son is known as. So Jesus. how is he found, or how does he know? Right, as he's growing up, he starts to, he, he get, he's getting visitations. Like mm -hmm. extraterrestrials are coming and visiting him, taking him away. And there's a there's a recording on the internet called Malachi's abduction, where he explains when he was, and then obviously his mom and his sister and people around him. They're like, where is he? He keeps disappearing. He comes back and he's not acting and do, like, doing things like normal children would do. Mm -hmm. But as he's growing up, he starts to be more aware of his mission, so to speak. And he starts to obviously write books. And these books, his, his pen is being guided. Mm -hmm. So he's putting out information to the point where people ask him anything and he just keeps giving the information. Mm -hmm. And he's, he explains that his mission, because the, the angels angels or the extraterrestrials that take him away, they take him and they show him things, show him like different, where he's from, like the planet Risk. They give him like, pull up big screens and show him things. And then he starts to teach on the planet. And he starts to write this information known as Wu Nuat. And 
most people are not ready for it because every time he's trying to teach and yeah. explain this, people are asking mm -hmm. questions about the Bible, the Quran, and oh, the religious okay. questions. So he said, I'm going to put it away and, and you'll ask me anything and I will mm -hmm. teach you that until they get to a point where he feels we're ready for the information that he's come to give. And back then he was like, um, there's a phrase he used, he was like, um, you ha you, oh, I'm trying to remember the phrase. Something, um, I always say all the time, I've forgotten, but it's like, um, yeah, that's it. The phrase is, I've come to give you what you want until you're ready for what you need for me to give you what I have to give. Mm. So what he did is from the year 1970 to the year 2000, which is symbolically um, half an hour, but it's really 30 years, because mm. the, the Bible talks about the last the, is, is the that, hour. Is that in terms of his time or real? Our time. Our yeah, time. so from the year 2000 to, tw um, sorry, 1970 mm. to the year 2000, that was 30 years. And that's when he stood in front of the world to say, right, let me prove who I am. And by that, anyone on the planet come and ask me questions about anything. So when you say that from that time, that's 30 years, but yeah. you're saying it's really 30 minutes. Yeah, and then now, because in the Bible it talks about the hour, right? Yeah. And the hour is symbolic of 60 minutes, broken, in down, broken down into two half hours from 1970 to the year 2000, and the second half hour from the year 2000 to 2030, which is what we're living in now. Yeah. I mean, ask, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm going to have to go into some sort of research on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, of course. That throws my brain a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no. you're saying 30 years is really 30 minutes? Yes, symbolically. Symbolically. No, no I'm saying when they talk about the hour, yeah. it's one if you hour. break one hour is 60 minutes. But yeah. symbolically, it's talking about 30 years, the first half hour being from the year 1970 when the seventh seal was broken to the year 2000. And the second half hour being from the year 2000 to 2030, oh, okay. which is what we're living. That gives you the full, mm, hour. full hour. And that, in that time period is where the truth will be told to mm. the world and, and nothing will be left unturned. And, um, and this is what he's been doing, the mission from the year 1970. He started teaching a little bit before that from 1962, just among close family mm. and friends and people who was recognising this person is of you know, greatness. Mm. So yeah. if, you're, if you're not ready to learn within that hour, what, what does it mean for the... Well, well, <laughs> it's not... It's, it's, some people are not ready within every cycle. Remember, these mm. cycles come around every 24,000 years. Some people are going to be ready now. And if you're not, you're not. It does tell you in the, in the scriptures that many are called few or chosen. Mm. Um, and if you're not ready in this 24,000 years renewal of our history, because remember that if, when we say renewal of our history, you're really talking about like the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first, meaning that what people are calling the black race, the Negroid, now everyone is accepted and find, has found that we were here first on the planet mm -hmm. first. And we go back millions and millions of years before religion. We predate religion. So we're the ones now that have to teach our story not based on what other races and other people are trying to tell us our story is. Because that's how we got spellbound. So, yeah, with that, so I've, I've got kids. Yeah. So what they're you, being taught in school... You've got children, school, kids are baby I've got goats. two kids. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two kids. Yeah. But what they're learning in school... Yeah. I'm like... So what I've... What I've the knowledge that I've received... Yes. And the information... I'm like... Why are they not... Are they not going to teach that in... in, in they will never teach you that in schools. I mean, we've grown up, most of us, in schools. The word school comes from the Hebrew word shul, which means hell. Mm. So you're relying on another race who came after you to, to teach, teach you, you about yeah. you, mm. which is back to front. Mm. Because, like, like I said, we go back millions and millions of years. We've lost our culture. Remember, there was, like, slavery and colonization Trauma. and many things that, yeah, yeah. that... You've been told, in fact, in school, they didn't teach you about who you are. Even when they At were all. teaching you yeah. about Egypt, they selected a specific path that they went down. Like you learn about Cleopatra, mm. you learn about Mark Antony, you learn about the Hyksos dynasty, 
they they avoided going back pre-dynastic. Mm. They just taught about when Europeans were great in Egypt yeah. for a small period of time. And they made movies like, you know, using um, Caucasian, like um, Elizabeth Taylor and, you know, they picked Image. actors yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that represent those Phoenicians and the people that were in Egypt and this Hyksos dynasty because they refer to in our language as Hikakatsut. The Hikakatsut really translates as burnt faces because these are people that their faces got burnt by the sun when they came into Egypt. But they don't teach you about, like I said, going back to the Neolithic, the time when there was only black people in Egypt, the pharaohs and the people like, they teach you about Khufu and certain people that were significant in their story. Because Khufu, he was, he relaxed the immigration rules and then allowed you know foreigners in oh, okay and then, then they came in and then after a while they tried to basically take over like they do everything they yeah. they get involved with so we have to teach our story now to people because the time has come when we are reawakening we really want answers we want facts we want to know and the thing is truth is truth it doesn't matter who you are, what colour you are, yeah, you can't. it's yeah. about is it true or not? Because mm. ultimately, no one wants to live by lies. No one wants, like, if you're going out or you're with somebody and they you lie to you all the time. I've been trying to talk to a lot of people. It's, it's, it feels sometimes they do want to live by, they're comfortable with yeah, ignorance. the fairy tale yeah. of Santa Claus and yeah. the whole feeling of fairy tale. It's it's like a cushion. Yeah. It keeps them, it, they feel it keeps them safe. It's but it doesn't so keep dangerous. them safe though. That's yeah, the I know, thing. but the yeah. image of it. Yeah. And when you try to tell them anything other than that. So I've like, I've said to my family. Um, yeah. So I got married mm. from Jamaica. When you're from Jamaica, when you're Jamaican and you get married, um, you don't really have a traditional Wedding. wedding it's yeah. a european kind yeah. of wedding so mm. i had a friend that got married he's from nigeria mm. that nigerian wedding had colors had the clothing had the music had, yeah. had a culture yeah so i said after my wedding i said how come jamaica doesn't have a traditional type of wedding mm. and there was no answer mm. and that's what kind of led me away from certain things into other information because mm. Yeah. The things, um, the things you wear is the same thing that Europeans wear, and, yeah. and, you know what I mean? So like is. you said, um, first part is people are afraid because change is constant. That's the one thing everybody mm. will agree on scientifically, like change is constant. And people have been following something for years and it's dead. A lot of anything that doesn't change is dead. This is why dead people don't change their clothes. <laughs> when you're alive, you get up every day, you change your clothes, you have a but you're alive, in it? Mm. So people are following books that are stories about dead people. Everyone in the Bible is dead. Everyone in the Quran is dead. So these are dead books, right? Mm. And they don't change. The information doesn't change. And the thing is that when you start to challenge or show them the wrongs in the books, they don't want to accept it. That's number one. This is why, as I said to you, Wusaba is a culture. Whereas most ancient races have a culture. Like the Chinese have a culture, the mm. Hindus have a culture. Have their own culture. They have their own culture, mm. they have their own language, they have their own foods, the, the things that they do. And we as the original people on the planet, we have a culture. That culture is Wusaba. But people, are not familiar or aware of it because, as I said, you were put under a spell for the last 6,000 years and then other people told you, this is how you do things. So even when you read the Bible, it says, whatever Adam named the thing, that's what it was. So everything you call and look at is what the European has told you it is. Mm. So you don't know any different. And they've taken away your language, taken away your culture, taken away your identity, even the names that you use. So. When you start to awake and go, let me start tracing my way back, you will end up in Africa. But when you get to Africa, there's so many different species of African, there's so many different tribes, so many different languages, and Yoruba is one of the, one of the original ones. Yeah, yeah. So they have maintained their culture, and, um, but even that has been 
tarnished or influenced yeah. by other Europeans and Arabs that mixed, when they came into Africa, they mixed with them. Mm. So now even some, some practices in the Yoruba culture are not authentic because they've now mixed with Arabs, you see. But the original way of Yoruba is being an animist, which is respect of nature, in tune with nature, and um, that ties in and aligns with the ancient Egyptian deities and our ancient, you know, culture. So, yeah, now it's back to giving you, like, if you had a wedding in Wusabat, there would be the same cultural, you know, mm. essence to it, the dress, everything, the foods, everything's going to be different. So you have to decide, can you serve two masters? Because they tell you you can't. So when you go to school, as you said with your children now, they're not going to teach them certain things because even the people teaching them don't know. So we have to educate the world. We have to, we have to or should I say, we have to give them the knowledge about who and what we are. And when we start going into our knowledge, we go back way beyond even the planet because our ancestors don't come from here. They come mm. from outside of the planet. And many other beings come from outside the planet. And this is where in the Bible and in the Quran and in the religious books, they call them gods and they call them angels and they use all of these terms but without really knowing the facts until you start to ask questions like okay you're calling these beings angels and you're calling these beings gods but when we're reading the books that you're telling us tells us about them they're acting and behaving the same way as we do in terms of their walk their talk they they get angry they get jealous they have emotions they do things like physical. Yeah. So when we say, if, if they are not on this planet, where are they? You get the answer, they're in heaven. Hmm. And then you say, okay, where is heaven? What does heaven look like? What do they do in heaven? These are just normal same questions. Same questions with hell though. You yeah, the same, same question with hell, anything. exactly. Yeah, they because if you the say they're in heaven and they wear clothes, because hmm. every time they talk about angels, they've got white robes on. Hmm. So the question is, why are they wearing clothes? How are they making the clothes? Mm. What's the material of the clothes? Because if it's cotton, that means cotton is grown in heaven. And if they've got the answers for that, then... That's there right. must be a tailor mm. or someone that's making the clothes. So this is what I'm saying. The little things that are just common sense, when you ask the question, you're made to look like you're crazy. Because you're saying... When you, when you ask their question... Yeah and it can't come back, that's how you break it normally. That's right. Yeah. The answers is, the facts is like, mm. make it make sense. Mm. You say God is on a throne sitting down in heaven. How is he sitting down? Does he have a body? Because if he's a spirit, then there's no need to sit down. Mm. So if he's sitting down, that means he's got a bottom. If he's got a bottom, he's going to have legs. If he's got legs, he's going to have arms. So like, when you want to know the detail, like, about everything, about God, Allah, the angels, whatever you're telling me about. Like, you want to know the details. Because they don't have the answers, they turn it around on you. Like, you're the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. And then the main thing you hear is you're blaspheming by asking questions or that you shouldn't ask God questions. Hmm. But if you, if you want to know, because it does say the truth shall make you free. But yeah. they, they say... Break... Break the spell. Break the spell. So we are we are we ask those questions. We are not afraid to ask. Not only are we not afraid to ask questions, because the master's uh, method has always been come and ask me anything. Now, if he's a mere man like everybody else, how is it at 25 years old he was able to translate all the scriptures in from the original tongue, right? Able to speak all the languages. Who's giving him all this power? Why is it no other, like, imams, preachers, rabbis? Why are they not al allowing people to come and question them yeah. on that level? So what it is, is because we got asked questions for so many years by different people, I'm talking about scientists, anthropologists, historians, ar archaeologists, um, name them. Everyone came to ask him questions to see if they can prove him wrong and say, He's, he's not telling the truth, he's a fraud. Mm. None of them was able to do that till this day. And 
he was on the other hand able to answer every question anyone put to him. And so he's like, what does a man have to do to prove their divinity? So now we're saying, because you've asked us so many questions, let's turn the tables on you. And when we start asking the questions, mm -hmm. they can't answer the questions. And it gets to a point where the best they will do is say that you're heathen, you just have to believe, just accept it, just have faith. And like, when you say have faith, what you really mean is have blind faith. Because yeah. you're telling me to follow you and just believe you and, feeling and just, mm. just go by what you're saying. But I'm supposed to be able to make that up for myself. And then when you say, okay, let's put that faith thing to the test. Will you cross, close your eyes and cross the road on a busy street and just have faith that a car is not going to run you over? Hmm. They wouldn't do that, right? God is supposed to be all loving and can do anything, or Allah, until we say, okay, do it then. Get rid of all the problems in the world. Then all of a sudden he can't do that. He can torture you when you get to hell. Because he says, if you don't follow me and don't do what I say, you're going to be punished and you're mm. going to be put in this place called a hell, right? He can do that. But when you're alive, he can't do the things you need for him to help you. I feel like that's part of the programming because I feel a lot of Christians, they don't want to question it, especially at a certain age. They've lived their life, they've lived their life as a Christian their whole life and they're not going to turn away just at the end because they feel they're going to go to hell. They're not going to turn away at the end just when they've, they've been practicing and been doing well in their eyes. And but turn they, away they, they haven't been doing well. Well, in, term, well, how, 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 okay. in terms of a Christian that does follow the book, that does live as a Christian. A Christian doesn't follow the book. That's what I'm trying to say. There's no such thing as a Christian. There is By something the that has con been concocted as, and, and yeah. told you this is what you should do and this is what you should follow. And there are two places... You're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. So would you say there's no Muslim, there's no Hindu, there's no Christian, there's no one following a book to the word? No, they're not because the book itself is a problem. If the book is wrong from the beginning, you're following something that's wrong. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so it's like you think you're doing the right thing if you're sincere and you'd like want to do the right yeah. thing. But as you start to, like I said, check what you're doing out, and ask the reason, why am I doing this? Where did this originate? Most of the religious practices or festivals, like now we're going into what people call Christmas, those are all pagan rituals from Wicca, the Wiccan religion, which is really the worship of Satan. All right, scrap Christmas, but in terms of the, the my mum... Mm. So I told me something that, that yeah, that you My mum, she's, she's you know what I mean? So we used to go to church, obviously, go to church, Pray, right. Live good. My mum don't. She don't swear. You mm. know what I mean. She's not. She's not. She's not an aggressive person. She's been humble. I've never heard my mum swear. Mm. So her nature is calm. Right. So, in terms of that, she's got that from Christianity, I believe. My grandma, she was the same. She was in the community. Okay. So she was helping everyone, kids, mums. Yeah, but everyone. you can do that without not having to be religious. You can be a good person, help people. Yeah, but you can do that without Wusabat as well. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm saying, because you said we used to go to church and we used to pray. Yeah. But that's something that somebody taught you. And I'm saying, why, go, why are you going to church? Why are you praying? Um, These yeah, are the I wouldn't say you Not, not you per, specifically, but yeah. I'm saying, like, you, you're talking about your, your yeah. family and all that. I'm saying, somebody taught you to go to church. To do what when you go to church? I know, yeah. So, to pray, as you said, yeah? It was tough to for pray me church, to God, yeah. mm. but then you're not allowed to ask questions like, if God is everywhere, I go against it. Yeah. Why do I need to go to church? Mm. I always, I've always, um, I've always thought that. Yeah, and when you're praying, who are you praying to? Is he listening? Is he answering you? Is he actually a, a, is he a person? Or what are you praying to? See, most people don't ask the questions it's because they've been told a story that they believe. Mm. But I, believing I, something and knowing something are two different two things. Two different things. For me... And remember, your mum and dad didn't have Usabat at the time. They didn't know any better. So they just went with what they were told. And if you go back to the parents. history of religion, it comes from the slavery. The slave master gave you the book and made you follow the book. And yet, 
in the book, it tells you like to, to be a slave. You see, so it's funny, like the slave master will tell you in the book to be a slave, and so now you're a slave for the rest of your life because somebody has told you to do that. So, okay, marriage. Yeah. Would, is, would, is, does marriage come from, does it originate from religion? It depends on what type of marriage, because remember, like I said, people were marrying way before the book or way before religion. This is what I'm saying, like, oh, depending on what of... culture you're following, mm. they have different practices. So which one came first and which one came after? Like now, you, when you get married, you have to get a certificate mm. from someone who says you're now certified to mm. be married. Like anything you want to do, you get a certificate, certified, a birth certificate, yeah. do you know what I mean? And even when you die, you have to get a death certificate. So where did all of this come from? But to become a doctor, you need a certificate, don't you? It depends on what type of doctor, because there are herbalists, natural herbalists. A doctor, again, like you say, is based on a system of education and a mm. curriculum. And then someone says, you're now a qualified doctor. Yeah. You can now deal with the pharmaceutical companies that say, this is what you prescribe to someone who has this ailment. And then you're now a practicing doctor. To be practicing or a GP, a general practitioner, you're practicing. It doesn't mean you really know what you're doing. You're practicing what is laid down by the people that are ruling who say this is what you do in this situation. Mm. It doesn't mean it's right. It's just a prescription, you see? So a natural herbalist deals with knowing what herbs heal you. Mm. The word healing, if you look at it, the first part of health is healing. Mm. You see, so it's like what you're telling me is things that the Western society have told you is what is correct and what go, how yeah. to do and how things go. And when you have a culture that predates that, because even when you go into ancient Egypt, they will all tell you that Egypt is the cradle of civilization. Everyone went to Egypt or everyone studied in Egypt. Even the Europeans. So was Ethiopia and all of that before, e before Egypt, what's the foundation of, say, well, the name Africa? I know that there's, it's been, is it coined, is it, is it the name Africa, was it made from, was it, was it Egypt, Europeans? Diff depending on what, this was with language is one of the biggest things mm. that they've used to, to cast a spell. This is why we are going back to our language, or original language on the planet, because the confusion comes in with languages because when you're saying a word you might that word might be translated from latin or from greek or from roman mm. and or from another language like chinese hindu whatever right and you know from 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 cultures that pre um predate the european culture even jamaica yeah jamaica all these type yeah. those are just titles that were given to the place is yeah? mm. so when you're saying africa Again, the word Africa comes from, if you come from an Arabic perspective, that's from a word called Faraka or Afrikia, which literally means to divide, which was mm. a description of what they did to Africa when they cut it into pieces. So we're saying the word. You're saying the word, right? And, and then someone else will say, it doesn't mean that it comes from Africanus or from somebody's name. Different places. Different, different places, different times. Yeah. And the, the thing with us, though, as I said to you at the beginning, is that we would try and... Uh, people say Al Kibulan. Al Kibulan is the name of Africa or the mother of mankind. And when you start to break it down, you're like, mother, mankind, who are these? And not only that, we're fighting over a continent when we were here on the entire planet before anybody mm. else. So it's almost another division Fighting or mindset. Yeah, yeah. It's like... A loaf of bread is over there and there's crumbs. You ever see pigeons when there's a big <laughs> loaf of bread over there and there's crumbs around and the, oh. the birds are fighting for the crumbs and the big loaf of bread is just mm -hmm. there. And we're like fighting for an identity based on other cultures about what the name Africa should be when we predate all of that. Mm. Like even the planet, who named it? They've got squabbling, Earth. squabbling over rubbish. Huh? Exactly. So Wu Sabat takes you to a higher level of 
mentality where you're thinking as a nine ether being, a nine mind being, because we resonate and vibrate on a different frequency. It's just that we've been dumbed down to come down to people who are vibrating on lower frequencies, like six mm -hmm. ether and three ether, where we're nine ether beings. So we have to raise back to being the supreme beings that we are. It's just a remembering tool now, because it's in your DNA. So when you hear the words, the truth, the, the knowledge, it sparks you off and you start to want to know more. Mm. And in knowing more, you have to ask questions, you have to study, you have to research. And when you find the truth out, it just makes sense to you. You feel yeah. it. And it's, you, it's, it's hard undeniable. That if it didn't make sense, I wouldn't even be here. Exactly. That's, that's, but because it makes sense, it, it, it affects people around me mm. and it feels like it affects them more in a negative way. Right. And for me, it feels positive because mm. it's true. It feels true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it all makes sense. So. But remember, you're, it's like, you're, when you're in the winning team, the losing team, because mm. remember, there's two teams in everything. This is why they created the God and the devil concept mm. because one needs the other one to exist. So it's easy to say when something good happens, it's God. When something bad happens, you blame it on the devil. Mm. But you, people don't stop and say, there's a puppet master doing this. Because, yeah, because how is it that if God is supposed to be more powerful than the devil, how can the devil get away with doing the things that the devil does if God can get rid of the devil? Sure. That's just to show you that when I say two teams, like sports, there's always two teams fighting. Mm. Boxing, there's always two people fighting. And one win, one loses, yeah? And the point I'm making with that is that when you're on the winning team, those that are losing, they're afraid. They want to keep you in that with them. They say mm -hmm. misery loves company. So it's almost like you're escaping or you're now doing something different. Mm -hmm. And you now, you look like, why are you different? Why are you like trying to not go with where everybody so, yeah. else is going? So it will feel uncomfortable at first. But your example and how it transforms you and your life, how it improves by way of what you do, will be really the, you know what I mean, the thing that mm. may help other people to see, you know what I mean, that what you're doing okay. is correct. When um, I've heard you let's say people, places and things. Yeah. So, and I've heard, um, I, I, I was listening to one of your videos and you, you said... Um, about the moors, the dirty moors. Go. I think somebody yeah, asked a the, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I seen a, I seen one of YouTube, one of the YouTube videos. So I've got this hat. Mm. So is this a thing? And there's this a place. So in terms of where, how you present yourself and what you. But for me personally, my parents, my grandparents, they're from. Jamaica, but when you say people, place and things and try to get away from these, these titles, mm. what do you actually mean by that? Like you say, Jamaica is an island that was given that name by somebody, yeah. but the original people were taken from Africa yeah. to Jamaica. Yeah, I've researched so, that So well. you're not, the names they give you of us is where you're at. So when you say names like all these names were given like Haiti, Nigerian, Somalian, whatever, whatever, are names that European and Arabs and people mm. gave to Could have been the... shoe, could have been any, right. anything, yeah. Right. So what we say, when we're saying transcend people, places and things, because that's how people are divided. Because mm -hmm. you might say, I'm Jamaican, and somebody will say, I'm African, and you two will seem like you're against each other. Mm. Like, oh, I'm Nigerian, or I'm Ghanaian, or I'm... And it's like, but you're all the same people. Cause It'd it's... be tough to even tell a, a black person from Jamaica that they're African. Exactly. Like, you know I mean? But, but the thing is, people who they respect have told them that. Like Bob Marley. A lot of people, Jamaicans, love Bob Marley. They don't really take it in there, do they? Right. But Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, the people who are serious about learning about their roots and culture, and who they really are, you know, they will listen to the wisest people amongst them. And somebody who's successful, like say, as I said, um, Bob Marley, Marcus Garvey, Peter Tosh, people who really studied and connected back to their roots. 
It's not about where you are, it's about your DNA. You can take somebody to anywhere on the planet. It's not going to change who they are by way of yeah. their DNA. Yeah. They can accept. So we have an actual fact called um, who you are, not what you accept. Because people have accepted these labels and have se- accepted what other people have told them. Mm. But that's not who you are. I didn't, um, you touched about a Mason thing, but I didn't really answer the question. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so. That's the, that's the thing that I feel people are most afraid of. Right, okay. That and Egypt, because like, Egypt has something imprinted in a lot of people's brains that's dark. Well, that's because of religion. Religion teaches you that the Egyptians are bad people. Yeah. And the Israelites are good people. But like in that, every one of the heroes or the characters in the religious world, they all went to Egypt to be taught. Hmm. Like I said, Jesus went to Egypt when Herod was trying to kill him. And all God, the almighty powerful God, could do was tell him to go and hide amongst the people and wait for Herod to die. But yet he's got the power to kill Herod just like that or make him change his mind. Mm. But Jesus, going back to the black and white Jesus thing, if Jesus was white, how can he go to a black place to hide amongst black people? He would stand out like a Mm. sore thumb, right? So it's like, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, so So that's that's a true story there or not? There's different stories that have been all mixed, mixed. up on, among this. I'm going, but according to their religious book from yeah. God, this is what is said, right? So, so I'm saying that if Egypt is a bad place, Moses went to Egypt. Moses was found in Egypt, right? And the basket and all of that. Yeah, and then he yeah, grew yeah. up in Egypt. Joseph went to Egypt. Everyone was going to Egypt. All the modern so-called European scholars went to Egypt. Plato... Uh, um, Aristotle, all of them, they went to Egypt. Pythagoras, everyone went to Egypt to study. And Egypt was this great place. But in the Bible, they tell you that the Egyptians are bad people and the Israelites are good people. So, you know, this whole thing about Moses going to free the Israelites from Egypt. When, when he went there with his, his stick and turned into a snake, what happened? The Egyptians also had the technology. Even though they would say, oh, he, his snake ate up their snake, but they already had the technology to do that, the ability to do that. Moses was actually made a god in Exodus 7.1. He was made into, like, you can be made into a god. So the Egyptians was known as god. Like, what do you, what do you mean by made into a god? Meaning that you are god yourself, but you have to become that by way of your abilities and when you've elevated yourself. Things you do in your life, you mean? Just knowledge and I, learning. I know that there's, there's something to do with your brain. I've, I've, I've seen a bit of research on yeah. that. Your bitu- yeah, yeah, like you, when you start to basically access these glands that people call chakras, right? As mm-hmm. I said, most of that comes from Eastern teachings like Hinduism and Buddhism yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But they tell you about the seven chakras that you have, but we have nine, right? Because again, going back to the nine ether. But my point that I'm really making is that when you start to study the Bible and study the stories, it's like Egypt is a a cradle of civilization. Everyone went to Egypt. So they they say they were pagans because they didn't understand them. Because when you look at the walls of Egypt, you see like the different beings with like masks on and so forth. Mm. But this is the key point now. I right? think that's what a lot of these images scare them. Yeah, well. because they've made <laughs> that's what this is what religion yeah, yeah. does. It scares you. Yeah. They say don't have any pictures mm. in Islam. Because when you start to look at the pictures, you start to see yourself. You see the nose, you see the mm. this is why they went about trying the Greeks tried to chop off the nose, but your features, big nose, big lips, that's what they would saw, mm. they would see in Egypt. They don't want our kids to but they don't want you either. to connect back to mm. that. Because once you do, then you're like, wow, these people mm. were great. They were doing brain operations. Mm. They built the pyramids, which till this day, no one's able to work out and decipher. So now when you go back to the word Mason, right, you have Mason, the word Mason comes from a, a, a masonry, like someone who's building, mm. like works with stone, works with yeah, bricks. Yeah. And building is, there's different types of building. There's physical building, tying back to your question on people, places and Spiritual, things. Yeah. And then there's, yeah, things mm. that are built that are not seen or considered mm. to be unseen. Or within yourself. Right. So now, what's, what's the, um, 
What's the first thing that was built ever? What would be, if you, in our knowledge of people, places and things, what would you say consider to be the first thing that was built? So before the person, it would be a place? Or the essence? Or because you can't put someone somewhere without it being a place to put them? Okay, right. So the building blocks of life. If mm. I say what's the building blocks of life, what would you say? Thought. No, no, no. See, that, okay. Physically, if, you mean? Even if we went physically and you said a foot, a foot comes from somewhere or something. Density. Okay, right. Right, so what, mm. what's density? Density is construct of gases. Okay, right. So the building blocks of life mm. would be atoms, right? Yeah. Because when you break everything down, it goes back but to the smallest... The, but when you say ether, you... you right, that's what I'm trying to show you. Yeah, okay. So the building blocks of life in the physical world will start with the atoms. Okay. Because you put one atom, two atoms, three atoms, mm. and you build up. Okay, so you've got yeah. like hydrogen, helium, yeah. and these are the building blocks of life to get to mm. what you would call like the ammonias and the single cells, and then they break up, right? So like you say, you go from density, mm. then the next thing is matter. Matter, yeah. yeah? All right, then from the matter, you get to the atoms. Mm. And these atoms are arranged and put together in specific configurations to create what you would call organs. Design, that's what I'm or, saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The so whole the, research right. is my brain, my brain. Not me. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, this is what I'm showing you. I have to get to the answer brain, to your question, pops, right? Man. So then these... Atoms form organisms mm. which become bodies, like you said, to mm. form a foot. So the original architects, right? Because when you're dealing with building, as I'm talking about masonry and mm. dealing with how you build things, mm. the original architects of the universe mm. before physical things, somebody had to put that together mm. to make you be able to build these things that we say become physical things. But beyond that, there is the unseen world as well, which we're saying ether. Mm. And so everything comes from ether into the physical world. That's sub subatomic. Or... Right. Mm. So now, on the, on the physical realm, there's also the builders who built the pyramids. Mm. They had to know the knowledge and the architecture to be able to build those structures in a way that to this day, people are baffled yeah, by yeah. the brains of these beings that built this, yeah? So a mason was somebody who was a builder, but you had different levels of masons, right? Mm. So when you started to work with stone, when you were, even now we call it being an apprentice, mm. right? So an apprentice would be like, okay, you, you get the stones together, right? So in masonry, you have different levels. The original builders were the ancient Egyptians. Mm. This is why they were able to build these structures which align with the, Orion star constellation where they came yeah, from, yeah, yeah. right? And you couldn't build something which, unless you're from an aerial view looking yeah. down, pinpoint, pinpoint like exactly mm -hmm. where it is and how it works. So these original builders are the ancient Egyptians. This is why the first mason they're referred to is Nimrod in oh, the okay. world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say Nimrod was a builder, right? Nimrod was who? The son of Cush. Kush ties to Egypt, which is in Africa. Mm. All right, so the original builders, which we know today as the original Egyptian Masonic order, they were the ones with the secrets. And they okay. never told those secrets because you have a system where you have the, the new entries, like the apprentice will be referred to as the EA or the entered apprentice, right? Okay. Then the, those who are a bit more advanced, like if you go on a building site today, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have someone who's like, you know, the, um, yeah, the, the apprentices, and then you'll have the people that look over them. So you'll have those who were more advanced, like the fellow craft, and then you have the masters, right? When you study, when you're a master mm. of something, it's because you've mastered that craft, you've mastered okay. that trade. Mm. So they will look at the stones and then make sure that each of these stones were perfect point, yeah. to build these pyramids. Mm. And they knew the arts of like levitation, and they had um, technologies such as 3D, 3D printers. Mm. So they were these extraterrestrials because they're the ones of higher knowledge and they were working with their ancestors on the planet to build these structures, not just the pyramids, but many, many other. Now, the bit where people get scared now, because today, what people know as masonry is dealing with the practices of 
people like they, they refer to as the Illuminati and people mm. who are running the world who were actually taught just a little bit of the knowledge in ancient Egypt. Like I said, all the Europeans that went to Egypt and taught and stole the knowledge and brought it back to Europe and stuff and acted like it was their knowledge. So these celebrities that... Yeah, so people like Albert, um, Albert Pike, um, you know, the, the founders of what people are calling masonry today, and they started to add their own wicked ways and other mm. things into it and turn it into the worship of Satan. Or they do, you know, they're Satanists. And today, they basically pretty much are the ones that anyone who wants to be like successful in certain industries, yeah. they have to go through them. They have different levels and gatekeepers and people that... And so what I'm saying is like with everything, there's the original truth, good way, and then there's the perverted or agreeable way, and there's a disagreeable way, or, you know, the opposite, because you have the world as it's supposed to be, you know, with everyone in harmony, living mm -hmm. together in peace and, and so forth, no, like diseases, famines, etc, etc. And then you had infiltrators or other people that came in or beings that came in and messed it up. And today you have people that are being um, tricked to go in the wrong direction and they're worshipping Satanists and don't realise it. And religion is one of those tools that has been used to put this spell on people. And it's a harsh and hard reality when you're telling people, look, you think you're worshipping God but you don't really know who these gods are. You don't know who these beings are that you're calling on. You don't know the names and the tones that you're calling I've on. I've heard um, Satan and I've heard Shaitan. Yeah. Is it the same thing, same person? Are these, are, what is that, a deity? Is that a person? Okay, so Arabic is Shaitan. That's where the word is. The, the same um, word for Satan okay. in English. And, but the, and the devil, the devil and, the, and Satan are the same person. Yes. The same, okay. Right, but the thing is people have been trick to think there's only one because they say the devil like it's just one person mm, but there's devilish people there's devilish people and the devil has children and he mm. has offspring because you know it tells you that in genesis that you know the serpent seed will have enmity against the woman's seed and they tells you in genesis again 6 um verse 4 that these beings came to this planet called the nephilims that had mm. you know sex with women and had children so they've got offspring on the planet but everyone just thinks it's just one person in a place called hell with a pitchfork and all of that, which is not true because there are devils. If you do devilish things, then you're a devil. Okay, speaking on shaitan, um, so I, I like to do research. Yeah. Um, you, you guys have a name called Neshat. Nashat. Nashat. Yeah. And I'm, I think if you move the words around, it's similar to Shaitan or it's, it's just words. It seems as if letters move. Yeah, but it's two different languages. You can't take a word from one language and put it into another language and try and say that's what it means. Because in a, in a language, it's going to mean something different. No, I'm not saying it means the same. I'm just saying that manipulation in the world that we live in, yeah. it's strong. Only, only because you don't speak the language because meaning that... Um, Meaning that for you to, like, okay, for you to read something in, like, and learn a language that you're not familiar with, even Arabic, any language, you will have what we call transliteration because mm. you're using the alphabet in English. But if you were to go into the alphabet in the language itself, I see even now I'm saying alphabet, but we wouldn't say alphabet in, our, in the language. We would say harfat. You see what I mean? And then... You'd have to say everything in the language. You can't then bring it into English. So Neshat is Egyptian. It's Misbatia, which, which was the original language on the planet. When you say Egyptian, that's a misnomer because there's no language called Egyptian. Just Egypt. Even Egypt didn't exist. That's what I'm saying. That's what people named it. And what people call the Egyptian language, they will say is the hieroglyphics, which mm. is the pictorial script that you find on the walls of Egypt. Yeah. But that is, they will call that the metuneta, you see. So the first but language was the pictures first, and what, then it was translated into words, and then it went... It was tones first, before pictures, okay. because a tone is a vibration, is a frequency. Mm. Like, for example, the dolphins use um, echolocation, yeah. and they use vibration and frequencies to communicate. 
tones were there first. That tone be became, as you say, a picture to describe what it was, mm -hmm. you know. So the pictorial um, depictions then became words because people then had to tie in with the tone of, of what you're, mm -hmm. you're trying to express. Because remember that you could communicate without, without even speaking, known as telepathy. That's mind-to-mind -mind communication by, by tones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so language evolved, but we actually have, in, you know, we have books that teach you this language. But that hieroglyphics, in, if you went from the Egyptian kind of um, school, in uh, Sumerian school, they will use cuneiform as the language, which is the wedge, ed, ed, um, wedge script. And again, that has both scripts of the language. But when you ask people what was the spoken language, they don't know. The spoken language was our language known as Misbatia, but it's known by different names. Sabaic, Nuwapi. Is Misbatia a person? Is that also a person or is it just the language? That's the language. But okay. the thing with the language, again, it's like if you start to do research as the origin of languages, it will go back to say who was the first person, which would be who people call Sheba, the Queen of Sheba that got because the women spoke first. And the first woman when she was... Um, 54,000 years ago, yeah. Ma'at Ka Re, that's a real Egyptian tone. Oh, okay. Which, which is also, she's referred to as Belkis um, in, um, in Arabic. Yeah, but people just say the Queen of Sheba. When you hear the word Sheba, that ties into Saba, which means sun, tying it back to the original word for Orion and Orion, um, Orion and um, Sirius, which is Sa'at or okay. Sabatat, as you see. But unless you do that kind of connection to go backwards, you're not going to know that. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important for us today to break the spell is to learn our language. Yeah. In my house, we love, I love research. I'm not sure. I'm surprised why people are so afraid of... Um, not really afraid. I feel like a lot of people are busy. They're just busy on, I've got to work, I've yeah, got to that's, do this. Yeah, but that's the distraction. That's all it's about, to distract you mm. so you don't focus on yourself and to get tuning inwards and really think for yourself. Mm. Most people are distracted so that they're not... It's only when people actually maybe like take time out, like obviously during COVID, where people mm. like, they were at home, moment to actually stop what they call the rat race even though we're not rats, yeah? Or when people go on holiday or they just like meditate or tune in, mm. then they start to think. Because remember, you're accessing higher frequencies. You're, you're what we call out formation. You're That's receiving actually, from outside yeah. in. So you start to process this and you start to think. Because most people think they're thinking, but they're not. They're mm. actually being programmed mm. On how to think. Just keep them going. Yeah, just keep you going. So you're just constantly just worrying about bills, worrying about money, worrying about things that just stress you out. You can't tell a person not to worry about bills because as soon as you say that, what? Exactly. Oh, the bills. Exactly. If I stop. Yeah, but again, if, if, if we stop, if people stop, what about the bills? Yeah, no, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm, because remember, you're now living in a society where you're uh, you have to follow the laws of the land and all of that because you're, you're, you're actually giving your entire kind of like living and everything to the society that dictates what you do. So we're not saying don't follow the laws of the land, but what I'm saying is that once you start to realise and know that you could have a better way, you can, for example, work for yourself mm. and then you're your own boss and you dictate how you do things. But most people are afraid to do that because they've been trained to rely on somebody else. Yeah. You can get your own land and grow your own food and live a certain way. And the price of land, price of Yeah, housing, but that's if you're only looking in a specific place. But Africa and places that are really your home have abundance of land and resources. All the resources that make the West wealthy, they're taken from Africa. Cobalt, gold, platinum, silver, uranium, name it. It all comes from Africa mostly. Mm. So, you know, we, you're living in a, in a European Western world and you're being a slave in that world, but you, you come from a place where it's rich in 
minerals, resources, everything you need. And you have the sun as well. <laughs> mm, options in life, man. But we have to choose the right, I guess. The right one, there's wrong ones, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. yeah, truth or lies or, you know, being a slave or being free. It's just, there's always a choice. And it's easier when you're able to work with others that are on the same vibration, same mentality. Because if you're trying to escape, and let's say, going back to the whole slavery thing, right? If you're trying to escape, but there's a slave that is afraid to escape, they're like, no, don't do it, don't go. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're going to hold you back. But you're like... Look, he's leaving! <laughs> yeah, you see what yeah. I mean? They're going to they're gonna hold you back. But you're like, this is madness that I'm going through. I need mm. to get away from this. Trust me. And you're going to have the house slaves and the field slaves. Those who are happy to comply. And it's a point now where no one on this planet right now has an excuse. Because the truth is it. You have all the knowledge you need on your, your smartphones. You can research things now. But it's like, have you ever seen a hamster that's just going around mm. and then you open the cage and it just carries on going around because it's so used to that, mm. it doesn't think it can leave. So you have a lot of um, the slave mentality with our people mm. that are still like, even though it's like, you're free. Even though the door's open. Even though the door's open, they don't want to, they, they're used to being in a comfort zone, which is not uncom it's very uncomfortable. It's not even comfortable. So it's like you can tell them, how can you and the slave master worship the same God? How does that make sense to you? I've always thought that if we, as people, just turn and work together, there is literally going to be no problems. There is no problems because you have all mm -hmm. the knowledge. Okay, even without working together, yeah? Who are the best sports people on the planet? Yeah, yeah. Who are the best dancers? That's, Who are the best musicians? It's all already um, Who are the best... Known, yeah. You know, not just that. That's entertainment. But when you start going into even like neuroscientists, physicians, inventors, you start to see that we are great people and we have everything we need. We just have to learn how to respect ourselves like all other races mm. and just live our culture. Could the Hindus do it, the Chinese do it. Everyone except us. Right. We are the only people who have God in everyone else's image. Mm. Isn't that deep? Like the Chinese, the Hindu, the you know, different people will have God in their image. But there's no there's in terms of that, there's no Image but we, out there projected. We have, we have. Yeah, this one. Yeah, now this, this is our image. It's mad that that's that's the image that I've never seen until three months ago. That's crazy how I've never seen that. Yeah, because of racism, as well. Because, like I say, like if you're a Christian, you grow up in the church. The images, even though it says thou shalt not have any graven images, but the images you saw as a Christian was of Jesus projected a white guy as a white person mm. with blonde hair with blue eyes that's what and I didn't get I didn't I didn't I didn't understand I didn't get that but but that's racism mm. because if you're looking at something that doesn't look like you you have to ask the question if God said in the beginning let us create um, yeah and there's only one in image. our image how mm. did we become different images and different c colors different hair textures different blood types mm. do you know what I mean because the God that everyone wants you to worship is the God they worship. So the Romans and the Greeks are going to worship God in their image. That's the image of Zeus that you see became the image of Jesus. It's, it's, it's you know, that's how that, go and look at the image of Zeus and then look at the image of Jesus. Then you have other races that have images, Buddhists and their image and their likeness. And today, what black people try to do is, just turn those images black, which doesn't yeah. even make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I spoke to a guy and he just told me, you know, um, everyone knows Jesus is black. Yeah. And I was like, mm. Not everyone knows that, but what I'm saying He's, is... This, that's what he yeah. said to me and I was like, hmm, I'm hearing this, mate. So. Yeah. But it's, that's what I'm saying. It's all about, we, we transcend, going back to your... So transcending people, places and things mm. avoids all these differences, these divisions of I'm in this religion or this denomination I'm black, I'm white, I'm yellow, I'm like, those are all dealing with people, mm. places. I come from here, I come from Africa, I come from Jamaica, that's all places. Things, it's like, you know, material things. Objects. Yeah. Car, house, money, all of these things. 
So when you transcend or rise above people and places and things, you start to think as a, a supreme being or a being that is looking at things from a higher level. It's not about the divisions of materialism or colorism or, do you know what I mean, any of these isms like Christism, Mohammedism. A lot of this information as well, when you're speaking to people, it seems the response is quite childish. Mm. So... In, in, instead of like looking at this as helping your community, they say, oh, well, you want to be a god or, or you're immature or you, you can't... The things that are said are not in our reality, so they can't, they can't take it in. So the response sometimes is just childish. And it's, it's childish because sometimes you have to grow up and people don't want to grow up. They want to be a child forever. It's like you can't be a baby or a child all your life. Mm. It's just like natural for you to grow up and get, you know what I mean, become an elder. So they, though, when you say to them, you don't even read the book that you're professing to mm. be following. You don't even follow what the book tells you to do. So who's the child? Because when you're saying you can't be God, but the book tells you you're God, you see? So it's like John 10.34. You can go to, as I said, Psalms 82, 6. You can go to Exodus 7, 1. It, the book they, they're supposed to be following tells them they're a God. How it's, is how it, it's received is not how it's, they receive it as never say you're God. Yeah, but who says that? When the, the person you're following, who you're saying is God, is telling mm. you in his book that you're God. So you're going against that now, but you're claiming to follow that same person. Mm. So it doesn't make sense. A lot of it is just what happens is, they don't even read the book. They go to church or go and somebody else and tells speaks, them and yeah. speaks and interprets and they have a sermon. They pick certain verses that they go over and over and over again. But they themselves don't go, let me go and check this out and read it myself. And nowadays, you've got smartphones. You can get applications that will translate word for word what's being said so that you will know for yourself instead of handing your soul and mm. your everything to somebody else. Mm. It's like the blind leading the blind. This doesn't make sense because they haven't actually taken the time to read it. Because if they did, they would know like, okay, this is not an original, there, there are no original scriptures today. That's the book you're reading, the King James yeah, Version. I wouldn't expect there to be, it's been, it's been so long, of course someone's going to... But, but they have older versions because English is not the first language. So if you're reading it in English, that's already a mm -hmm. translation. And you can't translate certain languages or certain words, words. into English. Yeah, yeah. You can't because the, 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 the tones are mm -hmm. different. And then you get confused. And when you say to people, do you know the title of the book you're reading? Bible means babble, hmm. which means confusion. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, and again, depends on the origin of where you're getting that word from, because you get Babylon which will go back to the Sumerians, where it came from anyway, mm. yeah, or Bab El. El is Elohim, which ties into the, when you start reading the Bible, it's like, oh, in the beginning, Elohim created mm. the heavens and the earth. Then you're like, who's the Elohim? You start to find out it's more than one being, different beings. Then there's different names, Yahweh, Adonai, El Shad, El Shaddai, Almighty. You start to go into the language, you start to see that Yahweh, there are different words that are being translated bow you see and then, are these deities or devils right good question so when you start to find out that the bible is from the enuma elish or the gilgamesh epics mm -hmm. or the atrahasis this is the stories of anu and his family mm -hmm. which is enki and enlil mm -hmm. who are called baal and yahweh in the bible and okay. they came down and they were the ones doing all of these things so just extraterrestrials right but the thing is our ancestors are not necessarily tied in with the Anunnaki. Some people are because they mixed in with us mm. who were first. Our ancestors are known as the Natharu, mm. who are the ones that are the highest, the, you know, they're nine ether ethereum beings. Mm. And they were the ones that came to this planet first, before the Anunnaki came. And before other beings started to came, come here, like the, you know. Were they first in the, uni in, in the universe? Yes. And that's why we can talk about nine ether as ether now the western world are just learning about ether because through that hedron collider yes they're starting to break things down and mm. realizing like you say there's that's why i started off when we were talking about masonry and saying mm. the, the building blocks of life 
they're trying to find out what was first, what was the first mm. thing. And they go to the atoms and they're like, hmm, I wonder something's before an atom. So let's split, split. it. Yeah. So when they use the hydrogen collider, you know, CERN, they do the experiments and they clash these atoms together and then they split them. But they, they're opening up portals and all kinds of things that are opening dimensions and entities and different beings are coming in. And is this, is this um, recorded and seen? The entities coming yeah. through. Yeah, some, some, some are seen because now they've got apparatus. Like it's like when we talk about the soul, for example. How do people know that, that they have a soul or a spirit? Because there were experiments where um, they weighed the body before <laughs> a person died, and after. Oh, so soul has a weight. Exactly, density. exactly. Density, if, that's yeah. what I'm saying. When you're dealing with people, places, and they, when the soul left the body, the weight was different. So they realized, right? So these are, these are things that everything is possible in terms of finding out the information now. Science. Yeah. And of course, if the body is just laying there, not moving anymore, when it was once moving, something's happened. Something has left that was making that body animated, you see? Is that a dead body? That's what I'm saying. The dead body is just still because rigor mortis sets in and it's cold because the burning has stopped. Okay. Wouldn't fluid be leaving a dead body though? No, to because make it lighter? Well, well, when you say fluid, that's another good point because we are more f liquids than you are. Like there's more water in your body, you know, red blood cells, white blood cells. Yeah. And so when you say liquid, liquid can become vapor or ether. So you go like from ice to water to steam. Yeah, but when you're saying you've weighed the body before and after, it's going to be lighter when it's dead, when the person's dead anyway. Exactly, because that, that steam, that vapour, that ether, that spirit, that soul has left the body. And you said it was in the blood, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you take ice and, you know, melt it, it becomes liquid. Yeah, and you You, you yeah. put, that, that, that liquid can become ether or vapour or steam and then it will leave and go back to water, which is the cycle. But yeah, if you've got any other questions, yeah, feel free. One more. So yeah. the Onk Tui yeah. and the Onk. Yeah. Do you guys work together? Are you against? Are you, is it when different organisations? No, again. The people right. with the one. Yeah, yeah. What um, happened is that because Wu Sabat is different and has to basically let people know this science, this information, this culture, this new way of life is it's new now, but it was always there, just being re, re um, you know, re-emerging again by way of the teachings. Mm -hmm. When you're studying, you're kind of walking backwards because you're going yeah. from like now Knowledge. to what was before, mm -hmm. right? So most people will end up back into Egypt, as I said, because that's where everything started from. When you go to the walls in Egypt, you will see the Ankh. You'll see the deities carrying the Ankh a lot of the time. Oh, okay. and that represented the fact that they knew the science and the key to life. Mm -hmm. And so that Ankh represents the key to life. And it, it represents many things, but that's one of the things it was known for. So um, everyone who tied back to their culture, they would carry the Ankh. Oh, okay. But because we know that there's a resurrection or a double resurrection, a new time coming where everything gets renewed, a new cycle, which people refer to as like the sun cycle, um, the age of Aquarius, the, you know, what they call the gold cycle. This is where we now, as those new beings being born again or resurrecting again, we wear the Ang Tui. And the Tui in our language means two. So people say, oh, it's a double unk, because they, they see the two. But that's to differentiate those who have been reborn again, for lack of a better word. And that's a mental, spiritual, physical, in every way. So now you're really meant to move on to the, the double resurrection, which is now. Not, not waiting to die to go to some, you know... Um, pie in the sky type of Has Malachi, um, has he been there at every single um, resurrection? Yeah. This is what I was saying to you about the, the, the being that reincarnates over and over mm. and over again. He's known by many names in different cultures, different times, like yeah. Tahuti, 
Thoth, Melchizedek. Hermes, Melchizedek, yeah. Yanun, Patar. Yeah. I've seen that Yanun, um, it pre it's what, trillions of years old. Yes, yeah, right. And, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So that's the being that is with us to bring about this change. And that's one thing as well. So everyone that's religious, the religious books are pointing towards more or less one person. Yeah. And it but says it's that the person's here yeah. and everyone's still... Right, waiting. Not even willing to... I to actually check it. it out. Yeah. So like, like, yeah, like good with question. that, so with me, yeah. what, from what I see, people go cinema and we listen to, and we, we read, we see, we, we watch TV every day, we see so many stories, we hear this and we hear that. But when, when, when it's a story that pertains to yourself, everyone's like, nah. Yeah, but you can go to the cinema and listen to a hundred different stories and come home and talk about mm. it and share it. Yeah. But you can't share one story when it comes to your, your actual, your actual soul. Self. And be, yeah. yeah, it's it's for me. But listen to the word sin, sin, in my sin, in my cinematic. Yeah, they, they use they, they that's how it. they. It's about sin. They try to change the word to movies in terms of moving images, but that's why it said sin lies at the door. If you read the story, so we'll you can... yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, because this is how you're programmed. Oh, man. You're programmed with images that become in like stored in your subconscious, and like you say, that's why I said to you that isn't it amazing? Like, one of the first videos I ever did on TikTok, I think it was, I was like, Intelligence, mm. like, people don't, it's like, how can you? Be intelligent, mm, but yeah. when it comes to certain things, you're dumb. You don't want to. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to yeah. check it out. You don't want to know. Use that. Use that intelligence, yeah. because if I say I'm the most intelligent person on the planet, and anyone else on the planet who thinks they're intelligent, they should really want to come and know: Is it true? Let me mm. test you see if you are really intelligent. And that don't don't make sense to me because people run away and they. It's like if you said Jesus is here today, I've arrived. Yeah. You get people who go, nah, you yeah, ain't Jesus. Ah, you're a fool. I'm going to listen out, to you. Isn't it? Go find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and find out. But most people won't even know because they don't even know what he looks like. They don't know where he's going to come, how he's going to come. Even the algorithms, I've seen it on, it, on, on a lot of these um, platforms. Yeah. Unless you're searching for certain things, you don't even get connected to it. You're not going to find it. Or the people it. that you're with, if they're not clued up or connected, you're not going to be connected, so... And you have, like you say, your family, people that are religious, they go mm. to church sometimes three, four times a week, mm. and they've been doing that all their life, reading a book that they don't understand or know anything about, and you come and try and tell them. They don't want to hear you. They're just like that hamster I was talking about, just doing the same thing over and over and over again, but asking and waiting for someone to come and save them or well, something. I love my mum and I respect her, so... Yeah. How I see it. And it is about your example and showing respect and everything. We're not trying, like, I speak the way I speak because sometimes you have to emphasize the point so people can get it and wake up. It's not, we're not here to be disrespectful to yeah, anyone. Exactly. Like, we respect everyone. That's why we say, Wu Sabat, it's not a religion. We're not trying to convert people or recruit people because the truth is the truth. If it speaks to your soul, you will just naturally move do you know what i mean you will naturally go where it makes sense to you and it shouldn't be based on a crowd or following someone or like because mm. just be the majority is not always right that's another For term me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people think oh if there's a lot of people yeah. going in that direction <laughs> yeah. and there's a church full of thousands of people yeah. that it must be true that's why with covid people are like someone said to me look what everyone else is doing Skip yeah. the jab and i was like what that doesn't make sense. So if everyone else is making a mistake, you want me to make the same mistake? Exactly. I was always taught, if someone's going to jump off the cliff, does that mean you're going to follow? My mum taught me certain things and it's almost like we're not using the same thing that, she, that I was taught. Exactly. To, to like redo. common sense, which is one of the most uncommon things. It's like, you heard the term sheeple. Because sheep, yeah, sheep, okay, people. sheep, right? Yeah. Sheep, oh, sheep, sheep are meek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Man. if sheep is going in one direction... Mm -hmm. But they're going to be slaughtered to become yeah, food and meat. Follow, yeah. And now all the sheep are just going in that direction. If one sheep goes, no, I'm going to go the other direction, it's like you're going against the green. It's like fish is swimming in that direction, mm -hmm. but one is going that direction. Everyone's looking at the one going in the wrong direction. It's crazy. But if they know that you're going to be 
slaughtered at the end of your journey, they're not going to follow you. So what's happening at the moment, you have a lot of, a lot of crowd just following and going in a direction without knowing what's happening at the end of it. So this mm -hmm. is the blind leading the blind, and Wusa Bat is here to break all of that. We're here to really give people the facts and it's down to you. The ultimate decision is going to be down to you. Yeah. So we're not, you know, if you don't think it's for you, I've realised that. Keep doing whatever you think then, and you will find out for yourself what the outcome is. And the outcome is you're wasting your time. Yeah. You're being idle. You're not really wanting to make the change that's necessary so that you can actually elevate your mind, your consciousness, which ultimately, mm. once you put it into practice, is going to give you a better life. Research is key, man, for me. Yeah. Look at the word research. R-E means what? To do again. To redo, yeah. To redo. Research. Search again. Because you've been following something without doing any I found out so search. much over the... Because when I, when, I, when, I, when I like something or I find something out, I go into it deep and mm. I hit it. It yeah. hits my brain. So I've been doing a lot of research and I feel like it's helped you know what i mean it's, it's i've changed my direction mm. you know what i mean but in terms of i've seen a lot of vegan people saying that if you if you if your body's too alkali mm. it's bad it's like an basically um like a bleach yeah we we'll about teaches about being balanced, balanced yeah. it's not about just going to one extreme or the other so, so if you're just vegan, is that more or less going to damage your No, it depends on everyone because when people become vegan, a lot of them are new to it. They haven't done research to learn more about, mm. do you know what I mean? So like, they don't go to the extremes. Like, it's like you have good and bad parasites. You have good and bad of everything. everything well, we we'll say yeah. agreeable or disagreeable. Balance, yeah. So it's about the balance. So people will say, for example, when you become vegan, you're going to lose you're not going to get enough protein, right? And they say that because meat and certain things give you protein. Yeah. But the reality is when you do the research, you find out that all the biggest mammals, yeah, yeah. are vegans, like yeah. elephants and, you know what I mean? It's like, and the, the protein that people are getting from the meat is the protein that the animals I've got from seen, eating yeah, the, yeah. the fruit and veg. Mm. So you're getting second-hand protein from meat. Whereas so you can it, just go straight to the source and get protein directly. I've heard from you there. guys say to stop eating meat. Is that based on how the how they're preparing the meat, or is it literally just not good for our bodies? It's not good for our bodies. Originally, it wasn't meant to be consumed because you're dealing with life. You're eating and taking blood and spirits from other animals. Even even and your, fish, fish yeah, as well. Even fish as well. Really, any living thing. But obviously, over years and years and years of doing it, people's um, bodies have adapted to it. But most people don't realise that you only eat it because you season it. If you didn't season food with salt and peppers to make it taste, mm. you, wouldn't eat, you wouldn't get a raw fish and just eat it. You wouldn't get a raw cow or mm. you know, pig or anything and just eat it raw. A true meat eater, that's how they eat meat like a lion or, you know, the, mm. the, they just grab a antelope or whatever and they eat it. Humans have to, if you look at your digestive system, you look at your whole physiology, your teeth, everything about you is not designed for you to consume meat. But we've, over time, programmed mm. ourselves to say it's okay because we took ourselves out of the evolutionary chain because we're supposed to be eaten as a part of the chain of life. But by we nature. took us, yeah, by nature. But we've taken ourselves away from that and then we only attack those animals that are weaker than us, yeah, yeah. like chickens mm -hmm. and do you know what I mean? But if you're in a, an environment where lions and tigers and cheetahs and you're going to get eaten, you see. So, so would, would egg come into I know Even when you think about egg, it's a baby. Exactly. So that comes in the same category. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and is this fun. is where people go, they will say, OK, I'm going to stop eating red meat and just kind of wean themselves down mm. to white meat and then eventually no meat at all. And then, you know, vegans or vegetarians will eat like animal produ produce, which still comes from the animal anyway. Mm. So it's like cheese and, and cheese is not good for you either because... It's hard to trust a lot of the... But that second part you said is. as well, like, you know, the way it's processed, the way mm. the animals are grown with like 
chemicals pesticides. and yeah, pesticides. pesticides and all kinds of stuff. It's not good for you. So, um, but we we're, we're not here to dictate to people because at the end of the day, we're all about with right knowledge. Right, right knowledge will lead you to like right wisdom because mm. you start to think and does this make sense? And then the right understanding, which ultimately leads you to being able to reason things out where we say sound right reasoning. When you reason things out and it's sound and it makes sense, you just automatically stop doing it because you know it doesn't make sense. Mm. If you know smoking is bad for you, why would you keep smoking? Mm. If you know alcohol is bad for you, why would you keep taking it? If you, you know, it's like... We're addicts. Everyone's an addict to something in this Yeah, and it's about, in it's about reprogramming that addiction. Because mm. most people are addicted to salt and sugar, yeah. which are as bad, just as bad. Mm. You know, so yeah, it is about learning what's good for you. Um, I'm not paid by th th this program, but if you watch um, a program called The Game Changers, yeah, so it's probably available on it. Like, they talk Game a lot changes. about, yeah... Um, you know what I mean, diet and things like that, because okay. there, there are lots of misconceptions when it comes to diet and food. And, um, but, but anyone who has transitioned from being like a meat eater to being a vegan or plant-based diet will tell you the health benefits are just so much. So yeah, much I've bad. stopped, um, so stop eating meat in terms of red meat, becoming, I'm, well, going from meat to vegetarian, I'm gonna, Basically, I'm a vegan, yeah. but that my energy levels and yeah. how I feel, I feel so much better mm. than when I was eating meat. And when I was, there was times when we just had that more like a veg-based meal, mm. we all said we feel different, mm. we feel better. So yeah. it was known, but again, when- Habits you get, die hard, yeah, innit? And yeah. they say society, oh, you're supposed to eat meat. So yeah. we're like, oh, we have to put it in our diet because you know, it was, it's part of the, yeah. what we always did. Because know? if they don't say that, then, Imagine what's going to happen to all the butchers and all the people that hmm. kill and sell animals all, all throughout the planet. The whole industry will come to go down. Exactly. Far it's, it's the same with religion. Like, the churches will have to close down. The mosques will have to close down because they're not teaching you. Mm. I mean, there are basic moral, you know what I mean, like disciplines that you will get, but some yeah. of them are very bad for you and some of them are good to get you onto the path of starting to transform yourself until, you know, you find Wu Sabat. And Wu Sabat, that's why we're here. Like, we have to get this information out to people so that they can really start to live a better life. Yeah. But it's up to them at the end of the day. Mm. It's up to them. It's up to you. And your journey is your journey. And the thing is, there will be people along the way that will try every means possible to take you off it. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, like, um, that's happening already. Yeah, you're doing this, you're doing that. But it's up, you, know, you have to use your mm. mind. Yeah, you have to see, does it make sense what they're saying? Definitely. Yeah. So I hope that's answered all your questions. But we do have classes. We have, um, we have many avenues to the point where no one has an excuse now. Because <laughs> if you haven't already done so, join our Telegram group. Because we answer questions daily. We have free classes every week. And the thing is, we've been doing this for over 50 years, non-stop, yeah, just, all around I've the world. Really just seen yeah, it. so people are just coming into it. Um, just search Wu Sabat, search Dr. Malachi ZK York. Yes, you're going to get a lot of crap as well, and you have to be able to, because, you know, they'll do everything in their power to mm. stop you from finding out the truth. I've seen videos yeah. of voiceovers, that's not yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. That's what... And it, that's, that's what when I was yeah. on this, the early, that's what threw me in the beginning. I was yeah. like, what are they saying? Yeah. But then I realised if you can't really see the person's mouth, you can't see the person. In the right, scene, you know this I mean? is when your eyes are open and then you go. see and read yeah. through the detail. And mm. the reality is that you have to think, ne no publicity is bad. Negative publicity is still publicity. Because the more you try to hide something from people, those who are really like... Well, mm. the videos that I see, I want to see more, no more. They're gonna do it anyway. The videos that I seen, mm. when people are trying to come out of or come out of religion, the videos that I seen was throwing you back in hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying good publicity, that publicity I seen that was. <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, yeah. it's like it's awareness. It's I still guess. awareness, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. it will make someone think, 
shall I look further? Shall I look, mm. you know what I mean? But there's also a lot of damage where people that are afraid and just like, mm. no, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to know. In, yeah. You hear certain things because fear is one of the tools of God. Because the only reason people worship God is because they're afraid of going to hell. Yeah. How is that a good thing that he literally... Going to burn you up. Yeah, it makes you f afraid of him. Like, why? There's, there's some saying they're so afraid to research. Just, yeah. to, just research something. Because they're scared of maybe finding out the truth. The truth that this is not an all-loving, caring based God. Just research. Yeah. Like, no, no, the Bible didn't say you're not allowed to research. But when you say research... In fact, they did say you should because it says if anyone or anybody comes to you saying they're of God, you should test that spirit to know if it's of God. How are you going to test... But they feel that they found it. When you feel you yeah, found but, what but, you but need to find... It says seek knowledge from cradle to grave in the Bible as well. Mm. Knowledge. Not... And in the Bible, when they ate the fruit, what did, what did it say that they... What happened to them? Cast it out. No, no before that, they knew... Good from evil, because oh, okay, yeah, their they, eyes yeah, were yeah, open, yeah. because they ate what the tree the of, yeah, from the fruit of knowledge, knowledge yeah. so of life. So they they're saying their eyes were open, and you're like, but they were already walking around the garden and saw the mm. fruit to see that it was beautiful, and they saw the serpent and whatever, whatever. So what eyes are they talking about? Hmm. Even the, my son questioned the third that, um, eye. My son questioned that obviously when Cain and Abel, and then he was he was casted out, and then he there was a there was something put on him. Yeah, it was a mark. Protect, yeah. yeah. So if he did, if that's the beginning and you, you're being casted out, how is there others? You exactly. Know what I mean? So that, again, it's questioned early. Yeah. But again, if... if, if but I remember, was, in religion, you're taught not to question. If I was a different person, I could have, you know what I mean, hit him down a bit and yeah, he yeah. just cowered in and, and, and gone and back into yeah. it. But yeah, I yeah. see how it's how It's, it's set repeated. up in a way that you're not allowed to question. Because mm. if you question too much... Going to hell. You're going to hell. So you're afraid. And people are afraid and they think in the question. The reality, though, you should think to yourself is, how am I even thinking of this? If God knows everything, he knows what I'm thinking. Just so, square that off in my head, right? Right. He's allowing <laughs> me to think this. Yeah. So, of course, if I can think it, I should be able to ask. They probably think it's a test, though. There's a lot of, they say tests. But it doesn't make sense for God. Because a test is to know the outcome. So no, God already... A personal test for you as an individual. I think they, yeah, but I'm saying, think about it. Yeah, Who's I know. testing you? Yeah, yeah. So God, Jesus, obviously for them in yeah. the book, it, from what I've heard a lot of people say, yeah. life and things are a test. So Yeah, but I'm saying you a test. You're saying a test. But not for God. God knows as as you as as Okay, so in so, terms of in terms of the book yeah. and the knowledge, it's perceived as God already knows. Right. But we are the ones that don't. It's our journey to learn something okay so when you when you then know then what because you're saying it's a test yeah? is it a right journey a wrong journey right, right way wrong right. way so then how are you going to get to that knowing which one is right or obviously wrong? you have to choose but i know but they don't go outside of that I know. so that's what i'm saying so yeah. then it, what you just said you about it's look. a test for them mm. to learn mm. if they don't do it they're not learning they're not going to learn mm. because they're not testing they're just accepting mm. and following whatever they've been told yeah i heard it so, yeah, I mean, your journey, you, you literally, you said you only came into Walsh about what, like? Three months ago, man. Wow. Yeah, but, but as you're I said, already... how I take information and I take it in. Yeah. I, 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 get, I get a lot of you things. Get involved. Like, if it makes sense. Yeah. If it don't make sense, that's why I, before this, I, I've never had social media. I've never had Instagram. Mm. Was it Twitter, Snapchat, whatever it is. I've mm. never used these things, but yeah. from this information, I can see that people need support there's a lot more to be done mm. out there and you can see things kind of going downhill mm. and i'm like why is it why is this happening so this this is where it led me to this yeah to people the world is we're living in a day and time where the world is going downhill mm. because of the people that are running the world and the entities behind the people that are running the world who people call god and they don't realize these entities are not really all good you know like you have people that are antichrist, mm. that they, they, they profess with lip service, but what they actually do behind the scenes. Actions. Like you say, you know, the Illuminati and the richest people that they meet, like the Bilderbergs, they meet and they, they have, these meetings are not public. 
they, there's certain world leaders, only certain people can attend these meetings. And they meet, you know, they go to like the Bohemian Grove right, and yeah. they, they, you know, they talk to these entities where they've got the big owl, you know, hmm. and they worship Moloch. And that, go into the Bible, you get Malik or Malik, and this is where... Oh, there's a big owl. There's, a, there's, movies. Yeah. there's, some, there's movies. All of these yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, people have exposed there's, these things. Oh, okay. And, and there's movies that, um, you know, tell you about these things, like Rosemary's Babies, um... You watch a movie with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger called The End of Days. There's The Fallen. There's so many movies that they tell you, but you, like you said, you look at it like entertainment. It's just ha, 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 you go home and you think, wow, that... But something deep down in your soul will tell you, like, there's more to this. David has got you know? giggling and giggling. And yeah, just mm. distracted constantly with foolishness to the point where people are just twerking, um, just, you know, just... Things that, it's just entertainment and fun, they mm. think. But when you go to below the surface, dig deeper, and you look at the state of the world, and you're like, is this a place that is, you know, somewhere you really want to be in? Or do you want to, yeah, mm. you know, so yeah, it's good to have these conversations. I want to thank you for coming through. No problem. And just keep on, Wusabak, keep studying, keep researching. Um, be on your journey and you the more you eradicate the lies and the six ether forces will start to leave you because they can't really stay in a zone or in a place where they're not welcome you see mm -hmm. so it's like a, i use this analogy all the time it's like if you can't stand smoke and you don't smoke would you go in a room filled of mm -hmm. smoke yep. yeah you can't breathe in there you're gonna leave so People have to get rid of these spirit, these spirit mm. forces, these 60, these are the ones that are speaking through them. And when they try to leave or research or kind of like break out of it, you just get everyone at you like, you know, but mm. you have to, you have to be using what I call the three C's, um, courage. You have to be courageous enough mm. to be like, are you willing to stand for what you know to be true? Yeah. And then the next thing is you have to be committed to learning and studying and mm. being on that journey. And consistency, the third one, you have to be consistent. You can't say, oh, I want to improve my health and then say, I'm going to stop smoking and then tomorrow you're smoking mm, again. Not put the work in. Yeah, you have to put the work in. And it's not going to happen overnight and you may stumble and fall, but you just got to keep getting up and over time you will win. Because they all say truth will always win mm. over evil. And that's, that's what Wu Sabah is about. All right? All right. Good to have the conversation, yes. man. <laughs>